Okay, so it has been pointed out to me that my recent run of videos pertaining to an active predator working within the Toronto film industry will likely achieve little by way of him being held to account and subsequently removed from the industry, but so what? There is no reason to be so defeatist and not put something out there just because corporations like to sweep these things under the rug. All the more reason for me to say something about it. I mean, besides, somebody could watch those videos and avoid finding themselves in a similar situation, so, you know, it's all good. So long as a young woman can benefit, then that's all I care about. Ultimately, I know he was a predator. The studio definitely knows he was a predator, but the studio has a moral duty to disclose the real reason he and the young woman were dismissed, because other studios would then not be hiring a predator who is free to do the same to another young woman, you know, procure nude photographs of himself having sex with other young female colleagues, having sex with them in the toilets on side, exploiting their emotional issues, their inexperience in the industry, etc. Anyway, regarding that particular case, I have one video yet to post in which I'll be running through everything he ever said and did, but honestly I found it more traumatizing than I expected it to be when I was reading through the evidence again. But, you know, I'll get through it. It is coming, it's coming. But in the meantime, Today, I've decided to talk about the death of my cousin. Now, I did speak about this case uh, quite a while ago, but I never revealed my relation to the victim. But yes, it was my cousin. An entirely different sequence of circumstances and situations to the girl who was groomed on the set of the Umbrella Academy, and yet, fundamentally, it all comes down to the same core issues. Vulnerable young female, elder predatory men, exploitation. Because I, for one, am not afraid to call all of you fuckers out. <laughs> it has been two years since her death, age 27, so there you go, she's a fully fledged member of the 27 Club. How cool is that? Anyway, what does this have to do with the inherent dangers of dating senior and or elder men, men of an advanced age? Well, allow me, if you will, to build a character profile. So, age 16, she runs away from home to be with a man in his 30s whom she'd met online. After a subsequent nationwide police manhunt, she is eventually located in Hertfordshire and returned home to Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Discarded bags of puke and candy bar wrappers are found stuffed into every single orifice of her bedroom. Guess what? She has an eating disorder, is only consuming chocolate, and then expectorating to purge it all out of her system. Now, did her parents have her psych evaluated? Did she receive any form of psychotherapeutic intervention? No, she did not. Anyway, age 18, after uh, several more relationships of this nature, she emancipates herself, moves to East Yorkshire to be with a young man her own age. So wow, is this going to be a success story? Has she uh, identified her issues? Is she finding some stability here? No, not exactly. Within three months, she has left this young man to be with his father, who was in his late 40s. I mean, did this man, this father, ever stop to comprehend the psychological trauma that this could potentially inflict upon his own son? I mean, this is so bad, this is so fucked up. That young man probably has severe emotional insecurities that he will now carry around between every relationship that he ever enters for the rest of his life. I mean... <laughs> I made so many videos about how these dirtbags don't even give a fuck about their own daughters, but you know, their sons are just children in general, fuck me. They're just narcissists, come on girls, you need to wake up to this. Anyway, this senior male sees it fit to impregnate this now 21 year old female, despite her evident emotional issues, despite the fact that her body is in absolutely no physical state to enter gestation or birth a child. And what happened? Her illness exacerbated. And ultimately, she gave birth six months prematurely to what I don't even consider to represent human life. This is so psychologically and physiologically damaging. But anyway, a year later, she is once again impregnated by this senior male. This man is actively making the conscious decision to be procreating with this clearly mentally ill young woman, and physically ill, who evidently has the emotional capacity, the emotional range of a child. Let's be honest, the underdeveloped body of one also. This is clearly entrapment. He hopes it will prolong her being in a relationship with him because they know when they get involved in relationships with much younger females, they're inevitably going to outgrow 
the relationship, the situation. They're gonna outgrow their issues and get as far away from you as fucking possible. Anyway, extraordinarily, she manages to carry this child to a point where, despite premature birth, he survives, though he does have numerous congenital defects. Anyway, only three years later, by the age of 24, 25, this young female has reached the inevitable eventuality. She has outgrown the situation. She clearly reached a point in her development as a young adult in her 20s, which most of us do. We don't turn 18 and then suddenly overnight we're all emotionally fully developed, stable adults. You know, we're still developing throughout our 20s and into our 30s for fuck's sake. These elder men know it because they were once this age also. You know, it's, just, uh, it's so fucked up. But anyway, she realized by this point that it, it, it isn't what she wanted in life. So she abandons both the relationship and her child, leaving it in the care of his father, who is now experiencing premature senility, mobility issues, etc. Who is to blame here? Who is to blame? Is it the young woman for abandoning her child in the relationship? <laughs> no. It's the senior male. Always. She clearly didn't know what she wanted in life. She was in no fit mental state to be making these decisions. He, as a fucking emotionally developed adult in his late 40s, fucking was. And this is always the case. Same with the Umbrella Academy girl. It's the fucking dude. He recognises your issues and he's actively exploiting your issues by being anywhere fucking near you. It's how these men work. Anyway, because of this, age 26, she was unable to be within a healthy, functioning relationship with any young man of her own age demographic, who would rightfully criticise this young female, not tolerate her immaturities, ultimately be unwilling to enable her, because she's essentially only ever been enabled by predatory elder men who don't want her to address her issues. And so, she entered another relationship with an elder male. After this failed, she then found herself in another relationship with an elder male this one in his 50s, despite the fact that she had recently been diagnosed with terminal cancer. How did this cancer develop? From an infection transmitted through sexual activity with these elder men. So not just indirectly, they are directly responsible for the death of a young woman whose life was realistically yet to begin. This is just another reason why I'm so fucking passionate about my work. In spite of her terminal diagnosis, she enters a relationship with a man in his 50s who proposes to her, you're the love of my life, we're gonna get married. He knew this was absolutely never gonna happen. He was just using her for sex in the meantime. It is just utterly, utterly disgusting. And you know, we're so quick to call out pedophiles because we know, we just know at face value, it's fucking sick, it's wrong. But we don't stop to comprehend that there's young adults who the, the exact same thing is happening happening to them just because, you know, forget the fact that, you know, oh, when you're 18, you suddenly become an adult. That's it. Your emotional development has stopped. Your emotional and psychological development suddenly stops by age 18. Get some fucking perspective. I am 30 years of age and I refer to people in their early 20s as being kids, right? And I'm only 30. So if you're a man in your late 50s and 60s, what are you seeing when you look at like somebody who's 21, 22 years old? If somebody at the age of 30 thinks of them as immature, thinks of them as being kids, you know, I say about friends, you know, in their early 20s, I say, you know, oh, he's a nice kid. So what the fuck does that make somebody who's 21 years of age to a man in his 50s or 25 to a man in his 60s? They know what they're fucking doing. They're targeting an age demographic, which is ultimately easier to subjugate than women of their own advanced age who are not putting up with their bullshit. But they're working within the legality of the situation, you know, the legal age of consent, 16, and, you know, the ages of 18 when you're considered to be an adult. These fuckers know exactly what they're doing when they target a woman who's like 24 years of age or 25. Because even though morality does not justify it, legality does. And they know that people are, they're, people are desensitized. Because you see a young woman who's 25 in a relationship with a man in his late 40s, in his 50s, and you just think, you think that's unusual, but eh, whatever. Because most people are not in touch with their emotions. Most people do not think of it from a psychological perspective. Most people do not really think of the morality of it. Anyway, she dies. The day of her funeral arrives. Now, I never talk about myself and my own trauma, but just imagine how this made me feel. And imagine how her parents felt. So on one side of the church, we have a predatory elder male who is the father of her child. On the right hand side of the church, this predator that she had only known for six months, whereas I've known this kid my whole life. You know, he should have just stayed somewhere at the back of the church with his head down for fuck's sake. But anyway, for some reason, we, the paternal side of the family, are sat on the second pew behind this predatory male. It just, it's just so utterly antagonizing and infuriating. I'm literally, I was directly behind this man looking at the back of his head. But anyway, astoundingly, he brought his own 
children. I'm not joking. His daughter looked a little younger than my cousin, and she looked fucking traumatized. She has had to witness her father giving validation to a girl not much older than herself, but not just validation, but sexual gratification. And this right here, it leaves your own daughter with the same issues that my cousin had, meaning that she is liable to only enter relationships with predatory elder men, just like her father. It is a horrific, horrific, vicious cycle. Anyway, they genuinely had to require two separate funeral cars to keep these two predatory senior men apart. Such was the animosity between them over a fucking young woman, a girl essentially, a young woman resembling a teenager, both physically and mentally. These fucking creeps, I tell you. You know, on a serious note, I think most people by now will have come to realize I have been severely traumatized throughout my life by this shit. This is fucked. But I have addressed all of my trauma, I'm doing so ongoingly, by turning it into a positive, using it to inspire me to make a difference. Anyway, clearly we can observe that this was a developing young woman with severe emotional and psychological issues that were not being addressed and instead being exploited. Now here's the thing, if we can observe this girl's issues from the outside, then I tell you now, all of these senior men that have been in relationships with her, they definitely can. In truth, they are all aware of her issues and by being anywhere fucking near her, are actively exploiting them. They have taken advantage of her issues unequivocal fact. And this is transferable. This is applicable to every age gap relationship of this nature. It is a generalization that you can make. These relationships, they should just not be happening whatsoever, morally, ethically. Fundamentally, they just present so many dangers. There's such a high capacity for abuse, be it not physical than emotional. They're ultimately fundamentally exploitative, and you're more liable to succumb to psychological damage than you are to actually developing these relationships. By entering a relationship of this nature, so let's say you're a teenager or a woman in your 20s dating a man twice your age, your father's age, perhaps even your grandfather's age, you are taking a fucking huge risk, girl, and you do not need to be, you don't need to be taking that risk. Why are you taking that risk? What are you doing? I'm telling you now, like, I usually try and be really rational, really psychoanalytical in my videos, but I'm telling you now, you need fucking help. Everybody can see it. They're just too fucking scared to say anything because they don't know how to handle the situation. They don't know how to protect you. And protection starts by not validating the fucking relationship that you're in, showing your disapproval. Yeah, she's gonna move closer to this predator. It's gonna isolate herself. She's gonna come to resent you momentarily, but I can guarantee you now, in the not too distant future, she will realize, she will come to a realization herself and she will return asking for help and she will need you there to be able to provide her with emotional security, with support, with stability. If you just validate these relationships, you're accepting that there is nothing unusual about it here. And she thinks she can continue it, and she thinks she can do it again. So time and time again, she's just gonna be bringing elder men home. She is never gonna address her issues, and ultimately she's gonna end up six feet under by the age of 27. And like, if you don't believe me, just look what happened here, okay? Now, get this, so my family were in discussion the other day, and somebody mentioned, well, actually, I believe that she was the one who advanced on that senior man. And I was very quick to shut her down and correct this narrative. Listen to me and listen hard. This senior man is still the one to be held accountable, always. Never blame the female. Simply put, we don't just all reach the age of 18 and suddenly overnight our brain is that of an emotionally and psychologically fully developed, mature, stable adult. And that is what a true adult is. Not being 18 years and over, not having a car, not having a career, not having your own fucking apartment, being an adult is to be an emotionally developed, mature, stable individual. And all of these young women that I make examples of in my videos, they were not. And it was not their fault. They were all fundamentally still developing, but then these elder predator men, they come along and they exploit them, they stunt their development, they regress their development, they stop uh, being able to address, identify their issues, they're, they're being enabled. But you know, I've already said this, you know, in truth, the process continues from the age of legal consent up to and into your 30s and beyond. Now this is fact, this is scientific fact. Like your brain doesn't actually even finish physical development until your late 20s, for God's sake. And this is why any man over the age of 40, perhaps 50, 60, in a quote-unquote romantic relationship with anybody in her teens or 20s, there is simply absolutely no excuse for what you are doing. No excuse. And if I see you in the streets, I will call it out. I will call you out, okay? It is not okay. 
I don't know when society came to accept this, but fundamentally, it is ethically wrong, and people need to stop being so fucking desensitized and wake the fuck up and start recognizing reality. If the young female is indeed the one to be showing interest in the older man at his advanced stage in life, his psychological and emotional development, he is considered an emotionally developed, stable, mature adult. He fundamentally knows better. He knows. A good man, a conscientious man, would recognize this girl clearly has issues. She's too young. She's definitely going to outgrow me eventually anyway. I need to stay the fuck away from her. I need to rebuff her advances. I perhaps need to help her. This is why, well, she advanced upon me, is never, and I repeat, never an excuse. This is also unequivocal proof that there is no, I repeat, no such thing as the nice older man or Mr. Nice Guy epithet. The simple fact is, when these elder men begin to advance on these young females, when they actively become involved with them, they don't stop to think about the adversity that they are potentially presenting to the young female. Umbrella Academy Girl, okay, she genuinely moved out of her family home the month following that incident, clearly not wanting to expose her relationship, or perhaps she had done and her family disowned her, in which case, good for them. They do not care that they are potentially destroying a family dynamic, burning bridges, losing your friends, pushing your support network away, isolating yourself. They just do not care. They want you to isolate yourself. They don't want you to have these spot networks. They just want to be able to control you and subjugate you. They hope that you will do half of the work for them by removing yourself from your spot networks and pushing your family and friends away. From the inception of these relationships, these men are thinking about one thing and one thing only, and that is themselves, not the young women that they are getting involved with. Thank you very much for listening. I'm sorry if I sound very, very animated in this video, more so than I usually do. Um, but I think, I genuinely think, that uh, given the title of this video, given the subject matter, you can empathize with me, right? Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much. Please stay safe. Please be aware of the dangers. In fact, just stay away from older, senior, elder men in general. And um, yeah, just um, be safe. Be cautious and be safe.